So somebody seriously needs to tell Jason Day to stop trying to make baggy pants a thing. I know you Australians are trendsetters, but let's not bring back the MC Hammer pants, okay? So I wanna address two very important topics when it comes to the golf swing before we start talking about this drill today. Because we're gonna be working on adding some speed to your golf swing, but also adding some control back to the hitting area because I know a lot of you struggle with really flippy, scoopy impact positions, or a lot of you have these really high rates of closure in the club face that make it almost impossible for you to be able to manage your ball flight. This is a game that requires you to hit the golf ball with some gusto, but also know that when you look up, you wanna be able to see the golf ball in the golf course. And that's exactly what we're gonna be working towards today. Now, in the world of golf instruction, there's some in vogue terms that pop up every once in a while. And one of the terms that we hear people talk about quite a bit now is the throwing motion of the golf club into the golf ball and when that's supposed to be taking place. Now, a little analogy that I like to use for people is that we know that when it comes to kinematic sequence that the hips are gonna go through this really big, quick acceleration phase and then they're gonna slow down. That's pulling the torso around, which is pulling the lead arm in, and then the body's stalling and then the lead arm works independently. I want you to think about that as you embark on this journey. Now, if I were to take my lead arm and I were to stand with a lot of my weight on my lead foot, and I were just to swing it back and forth in a very relaxed sort of way. I want you to think about the golf swing like this. Now, if I wanted this arm to go faster without being tense, what would I do? Well, I could start adding a little bit of weight shift and a little bit of body turn. And I could make sure that as I'm going through and loading my system up and unloading it, that I stall it out at the right time and let my arm swing faster, which in turn is gonna make the golf club go faster. We want the hands and arms to go really fast in the swing but we wanna do it without creating a lot of tension through the hands and the arms. That's the hardest part when it comes to playing this game because we know that we can activate the shoulders and activate the hands and activate the arms and we can get that club moving really quickly. But that right there is what's gonna make golf a disaster for you moving forward. So what I want you to remember in this whole big picture that I'm gonna paint for you today is that when you do this drill, your job is to get very focused on what you're feeling through the shoulders, the hands and the arms you wanna train the trail shoulder, the trail arm, and the trail wrist on what it should be doing in the speed zone without being tense. If you can learn this movement and you can get connected to it, and you can follow this drill piece by piece, then every single one of you, regardless of your skill set, is going to become a much better player when this is all said and done. The analogy that we use a lot here at My Golf DNA is we have the slow zone up top, the acceleration zone in the middle, and then we have the speed zone down here. Now in the speed zone, what we're gonna have is out in front of us is gonna be what we call our throw zone. Where I have these three alignment sticks is where we're gonna be working to throw the golf club. Now, I got some bad news for a lot of you because I think a lot of you are gonna have this sort of misconception that you're gonna pick up 10, 12, 15 miles an hour club head speed like all of the marketing gurus tell you that you're gonna pick up. This throwing motion is gonna help you with speed for sure. It's gonna help you with speed, but it's not gonna pick up 20 miles an hour. You might pick up three, four miles an hour when it's all said and done, but what you're gonna find is is that with the speed that you're adding to your swing, you also have a whole lot more control. That's a big win. A big win, right? Of course it is. Okay, so step number one of this drill, what we're gonna be working to train here is the synchronicity of your lead hip and the throwing motion of your trail arm. You're gonna get connected to those two movements. Now, how we're gonna do this is gonna be a little bit in an exaggerated format at first. Now, the way I want you to set this up is you can use three alignment sticks, or you can use three golf clubs. I have a golf ball in the position in which I'm gonna be hitting eventually when we get further into the drill. And I have an alignment stick pointed directly in front of that down the target line. I have an alignment stick that's off to left field about 30 to 40 degrees open. And then I have an alignment stick that's pointed off to right field about 30 to 40 degrees open. You don't need to be precise with this. Again, this is just to create feels and get connected to those feels when you're doing these movements so that you have something that you can build on. Now, as we embark on this journey, I'm gonna give you rep strategies that I want a lot of you at home to be able to play around with. A good practice session is gonna have somewhere between 100 to 300 total repetitions in it. I'm gonna usually start out by doing a lot of small, really concentrated movements to get my brain connected to what my body is feeling. And then I'm gonna progressively do more and more reps of it. And then I'm gonna, as I get proficient with that, I'm gonna start picking up the pace. You wanna think about your practice sessions as kind of like these ladder drills, where you always have the ability to go up the ladder but go back down the ladder if you see things break down. Now, let's go ahead and start with step number one. What we're gonna be working towards, like I said, is doing a sufficient number of reps here where we can feel the lead hip function and the trail arm helping throw out here into the throw zone. Now, here's how I want you to think about this throwing motion. 
this throwing motion isn't going to be as robust as a lot of you might think. You're gonna be basically doing a small throwing motion from your elbow down to your wrist. I don't want your wrist to have any sort of change in the position that we're gonna set it in. When we start adding the golf club to the mix and we start adding speed, your wrist is gonna have a lot of things happen to it based off of the weight of the club and the momentum and inertia that you put in the swing shape. So what we're gonna do is, is we're basically gonna preset our trail arm, get our body in the right spot, kind of the spot that we worked to get into last week, and then we're gonna start working on syncing it up, getting you connected to it, and then we're gonna start creating some dynamic movement around that. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and take your setup position, and I want you to put your lead hand in your pocket. Okay, trail arm should just be hanging down here freely. And all I want you to do is elevate your arm just slightly and flex it, and I want you to make sure that your wrist and your forearm are set. So you wanna set it into that position like we were hammering a nail into the wall. And I want you just to go ahead and have about 80% of your weight underneath your lead ankle, and I want you to turn your chest back just ever so slightly. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and rotate the hips open so that my hips are gonna be parallel to this line that's off to left field. And as you see that hip open up, you're gonna notice that my trail elbow comes down in front of my belt loop. I want you to think about your elbow and your belt, or I'm sorry, your hip, anchoring to one another, and I want you to fire your trail arm out towards right field. Yes, the elbow's not gonna stay here, but I want you to think about it being very quiet as you extend the right arm out in this direction. If you focus on that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna keep the trail shoulder really neutral. It's gonna allow the trail wrist to move through very stable. Now, this motion, like I said to you in the opener, is not gonna add tons and tons of speed to the mix, but it's gonna train your trail arm, the throwing motion that actually does exist, because a lot of you at home don't realize that you're probably overusing your trail arm way too much in your golf swing anyways. And I want you to think of when you're starting this process as your trail arm being a passive conduit that's helping you transfer energy. And this piece that I'm teaching you here today is kind of like the icing on the cake, giving you that little bit extra that could help you hit it a little bit further with a whole lot more control. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a series of reps here. Let's do 10 reps together. We're just gonna elevate our arm ever so slightly, flex it, about 80% of our weight on our lead foot, turn the chest back just a slight amount. Now, as I start to rotate the hips open, my elbow should get right in front of my belt loop, and I'm gonna try to keep my wrist inset, and I'm gonna fire my arm out towards right field. And you wanna get to a point where you can do this dynamically like I am. Rotate the hip back. If you need some help on how to rotate the hip, what I do is I generally try to find my obliques and I try to think about this lead hip moving back and away from the golf ball. If you think it moving back up and away, that's gonna rotate the hips back. It's gonna straighten up the lead leg. That's what forces the club to move in the opposite direction. It makes it go really fast, okay? So preset the arm. I got a little bit of wrist set. Okay, I got 80% of my weight on my lead foot. Turn back, okay? That movement right there is what I want you to be connected to. Once you get connected to it, pick up the golf club. We're gonna move the ball out of here for now. You're gonna do this not with just your trail hand on the club. And the reason why I say that is because the club is gonna be pretty heavy. But what you're gonna be doing here is you're gonna be trying to maintain the sort of set feel and where you're throwing the club in the mix. You're not gonna be able to throw it out towards right field unless you're way too far from the inside. And you shouldn't be based off of the, the position that I have you preset in. So what we're gonna do is Take our setup, okay? Flex the trail arm, or lift the trail arm up, flex it, move that wrist into set, 80% of my weight on my lead foot, turn back ever so slightly. Now I'm gonna feel my trail arm pushing out towards right field as my lead hip opens up, okay? And I'm gonna do this by trying to maintain the set in there. It's gonna feel a little bit tense at first. You should feel a little tense at first because you're learning a new movement. But once we start learning that this movement is here to stay, then we start reducing the tension that you feel in your grip and let the club do what it wants to do. And you're gonna see that it pulls itself down and wants to rotate perfectly through the point of contact. So let's go ahead and do a series of reps here. Elevate, flex. Okay, turn back slightly, 80% of my weight to my lead foot. So I feel like I'm pushing out towards right field. You can see that by having the lead hand on there and opening the hips up, it actually makes it almost impossible for you to have your hands and arms working out that far. Okay. <clears throat> OK, 
Keep that trail wrist in its set position. 80% of your weight on your lead foot. Turn back slightly, okay? So I want you to feel that throwing motion out there. Once you can feel it, now let's start reducing the tension and letting the club swing. Okay, so I started letting the club go. Now, as I start getting that feel, we wanna start from a static address position and start making this more like a golf swing before we start hitting golf balls. So we're gonna do this in a way where I want you to think short to long. So your hands and your arms in the club are gonna be just outside the, the speed zone but you're gonna be working to the top of the acceleration zone on the lead side of the body as you're throwing it into the throw zone here. I know that's a lot to think about, but think about short to long and what we just got connected to, left hip and the throwing motion, and that should make it and consolidate down what you're actually having to go after here, okay? So now we're gonna start from a static address position. We're gonna shift and turn a little bit. So I'm just outside the speed zone here, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and left hip and throw the club into this zone, making sure that I feel like my wrist stayed set, focusing on my elbow, getting that throwing motion. Now, once I get comfortable with this, before I start hitting golf balls, what I want you to remember is you need to back check it on camera. If you back check it on camera and you notice that, hey, we've got Shaftley in there and we got the club face squared up by the time it makes its way through the low point, now you're ready to start hitting some shots and seeing how your success rate is. You're gonna see really early on if you can sink or swim with this drill because of the fact that you should be connected to body movements and letting the club and the ball react to it. So let's do a one-to-one. -one. So remember, it's as your left hip opens up, your elbow and your hip anchor, throwing motion out towards right field, get really connected to that movement specifically. Okay, that felt pretty good. Keep your tension levels down in your grip. Okay, good solid contact there. Now, let's just say I start getting some success with this. Yeah, I'm not hitting it far because I'm making small swings, but you're putting the speed and the throwing motion in the right spot now. You're creating compression. You're doing the things that you can build into. If you're doing this throwing motion wrong, you're gonna know it very, really quickly. If you're doing it out of synchronicity, you're gonna know really quickly. You're not gonna be able to hit the shots that I just hit. It's not that I have more talent or I've done this longer. You're just thinking too much about the club and the ball and not enough about the body. <clears throat> so let's do another one. It's a really good solid contact there. So little small swing, accelerating through the throw zone. And now we have a little half swing that's going very good and tight compressed shots that I can start going up the ladder and making the swing a little bit longer. That right there is a drill that's gonna help you learn the throwing motion and how to sync it up with your lower body. You want to be able to throw the club head in the right way. You wanna do it without these big inputs from your shoulder, your elbow, or your wrist. Take the time and be diligent and disciplined with this movement and then allow the speed to come back to the swing by adding more width and rotation to the mix, and you're gonna be a much happier golfer. Good luck, hope you guys play well.